said, come on, put your hands together and bless his name. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord and dwell forever. Come on, it's, it's Resurrection Sunday. Come on, he got up with all power in his hand. We give God praise and we give God honor. Come on, magnify his name with us on today. He is worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same house, God is worthy to be praised. And welcome to St. James African Methodist Episcopal Church located here in Columbia, South Carolina, in the stark community that we call Willie Hill. And I want to just take this opportunity to welcome you to this Easter celebration. Come on, put your hands together for the Lord. Amen. And so my brothers and sisters, we ask that you would like, comment, and share this broadcast so that we can enter into the homes of those persons who need to hear and receive a word from the Lord. I don't know about nobody else, but I'm ready to have church on this morning. Amen. And get our praise on. At this time, we have our open selection by our praise team prayer by myself and a selection by our dynamic praise team. Come on, put your hands together. And just clap. and sisters, let us pray on this day. Father, we stretch our hands to thee. No other help that we know. If thou draw thyself from us, O oh, weather shall we go. O oh, God, it's me, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's not my mother, not my father, not my sister, nor my brother. But God, it's me. It's me, O oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. Most gracious and eternal God, we thank you yet another day. 
that you have allowed us to assemble in this place, to gather in your name to worship you in spirit and in truth. But most of all, God, we want to say thank you that you allowed us to see another resurrection Sunday. You didn't have to do it, but we're glad that you did it. And so, God, on this day, we came to give you our very best. We came to lift you up. We came to clap our hands. We came to lift up our hands. We came to leap for joy. We came to do our dance because we have the testimony that if it had not been for you on our side, you would not be here in our lives on today. So God, we say thank you for tabernacling with us just for a little while on this afternoon. God, we thank you for everything that you and will continue to do throughout the duration of this worship experience. God, I got a sneaky suspicion that God, everything is going to be all right. I got a sneaky suspicion, God, that breakthroughs are going to happen today. Miracles are going to happen today. Signs and wonders are going to happen today. And we're going to make sure that we give you our very best. And God, for that, we say thank you. So God, anoint the choir fresh, anoint me as I stand to preach the word, and bless those people who are in sanctuary and those who are virtual. God, I don't believe that you brought us this far to leave us now. So God, we ask that you will stay here with us. Continue to fill us with your love and for these blessings we give your name praise. Without a doubt, we know that you have been revived. And we shall leave this place. And so, God, have thy own way. Have your way in this worship experience. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Hallelujah. Amen.
Happy birthday to all of those persons who are celebrating birthdays in the month of April. Amen. Come on, put your hands together and give God praise for all of those persons who are celebrating birthdays in the month of April. And those persons who are celebrating anniversaries. Amen. In the month of April. Amen. We praise God for all of you and we pray that you will have many more birthdays and anniversaries to come. Amen. We want to always to continue to praise God for Reverend Moses Renberg and Lady Renberg and all of the brothers and sisters of the Brown Chapel Church family for allowing us to come into the worship experience. Amen. Praise the Lord for while we are temporarily worshiping here while our church undergoes renovations and we say to God be the glory. Also, our holy convocation reclaimed. Uh, Holy Convocation is this week in Florence, South Carolina, and I believe, brothers and sisters, that we're going to experience a lot of miracles, signs, and wonders on this week, and so we ask that if you can and will, join us this week in Florence, South Carolina, for our Holy Convocation on this coming week. Amen, and we praise God from whom all blessing flow. All auxiliaries, my brothers and sisters, we are approaching our holy conference, and I'm going to ask that all auxiliaries will have your reports to me no later than March, I mean, May the 4th, if you will. Amen. Our, our holy conference, our third holy conference is approaching. I'm asking all auxiliary persons to have their reports to me uh, no later than May the 4th. Amen. Let me just say thank you. 
uh, St. James and all of you who have participated in our Holy Week experience. Amen. I believe that we had a wonderful time in the Lord. Come on, put your hands together. Yeah. Our praise from Palm Sunday, our concert. Amen. A Monday, Thursday, worship experience by Reverend yeah. Dr. George Hicks. Amen. Our virtual Good Friday service and our Fellowship of Churches. Amen. Good Friday service, as well as this morning at 7 a.m., our resurrection service with the Fellowship of Churches, where the Reverend Thelma Gordon preached the Word of God. So we want to say thank you so much for uh, all that you have done this week, amen, in support of the Holy Week experience, amen. So now we are now approaching Mother's Day, amen, where we will celebrate all of the mothers, amen. Praise God. I do believe that uh, the lay organization have a program uh, on Zoom, if you will, on next Sunday. So we'll make sure we we'll share that um, information on our call multiplier so that you can be in support of that as well. And on next Sunday as well, the Emmanuel Amy Church in Columbia will have its anniversary. And I'm going to go and support them. Amen. And I pray that some of you will go and support them as well. Amen. On next Sunday. And so our service will be abridged um, so that I can go and support them. Amen. Because we all are part of the kingdom of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's all the announcements that I have for you on this day. And so my brothers and sisters, we... Give God praise because it is time for us to give. Amen. Amen. Come on, put your hands together for this given time. And giving is a part of worship. Those that give unto the Lord, the Lord will give back unto you good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over that you may not have room enough to receive. For God said that He can and will open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing upon each and every last one of you that you may not have room enough to receive. Amen. When I was younger, my mama taught me, you can't be God's giving, no matter how hard you try. And so, beloved, on this Easter um, day, uh, we ask that you will so exceed in your time, your offering, your benevolence, your sacrificial, your tribe, whatever the Lord has laid upon your heart to give on this day. I want you to know there is nothing too small a baby that my God can't multiply. Amen? And you have three ways that you can give. You can go to our website by clicking... Uh, or typing rather www.stjamescola.com there's a button there that you can give through our online giving the second method is if you have an android or an apple device go to those stores download the app called givelify search for st james amy church columbia and you'll be able to give through our givelify apparatus Last and certainly not least is what I call the OG way, mailing your gifts to the P.O. Box 5594, Columbia, South Carolina, 29250. Amen. And so my brothers and sisters, if you prepare to give on this day, whether it's electronic or by envelope, we ask that you lift it up. Amen. And repeat these words with me. God, I thank you. I have it to give. Thank you for allowing me to be a blessing to St. James Church. Now, God, multiply, sanctify, use it for your glory and for your honor. This I ask in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. At this time, my brothers and sisters, we ask that you would give, and those who are in the sanctuary may give those gifts when you are leaving out of uh, the blessed sanctuary on today. Amen. And we praise God. Amen. Also, let me just say this before I forget. Uh, the PayPal that we give online through our website will be uh, going down the last Sunday of this month. And we will be resurrecting a new PayPal um, on next month. And so we ask that you go to yourself accordingly to those instructions. Amen. So on next Sunday will be your last Sunday in giving through the online giving platform of PayPal. We will make sure we put the new one up by the first Sunday in May. Praise God. Amen. At this time, my brothers and sisters, we have singing 
by the dynamic praise team, and then you will hear from God's voice, your pastor.
Let us pray. Bread of heaven, bread of heaven, feed us until we want no more. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Those of you that have your Bibles, turn with me to Luke chapter number 18 beginning at verse 31 and ending at verse 34 you'll find these words recorded as Luke chapter 18 verses 31 through 34 and it says and taking the twelve, he said to them, See, we are going up to Jerusalem, and everything that is written about the Son of Man by the prophet will be accomplished. For he will be delivered over to the Gentiles, and will be mocked and shamely threat and spit upon. And after the flog him, they will kill him. And on the third day, he will rise. Somebody shot rise. rise. But they understood none of these things. This saying was hidden from them, and they did not grasp what was said. That's enough. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. Amen. Brothers and sisters, if you allow me just for a little while to preach with this thoughts in our minds, the greatest comeback of all time. The greatest comeback from all time. Let's work it out. Brothers and sisters, many people have said to me that I am very transparent. That I'm more transparent than I have to be. My father told me a long time ago that people don't want to listen to a preacher who can tell the truth. But everybody wants to hear a preacher who can be himself. People want and need a preacher who is honest, real. Nobody wants to hear Superman every Sunday, but should want a preacher who can just take off the king, lose the steam and put it where we can find it. Having to say that I want to share with you something that took place last year when I turned 33. My 33 years of living, I have come 
to the conclusion, Sister Chassie, that I am allergic to crazy people. Come on, sir. Crazy people makes me break out. Crazy people make my pressure rise. Friends, when I discover from this day forward for the rest of my life that I am now allergic to crazy people. Matter of fact, last year I had to pay to see a therapist because I had some crazy people in my life who was leading me to believe that I was one of them. I think this is the right place right here to shout that I'm not crazy. Although I'm not crazy, but I think all of us have a little bit of crazy inside of us. Matter of fact, there are moments when everyone has a right to be crazy. It's just that some people abuse the privilege. Some of us have jobs just like you and I who have to deal with all type of crazy people. And I must admit that all of you, my brothers and sisters, I am your pastor and you treat me fairly well. But I don't think I get enough credit doing all that I do unmedicated. I should be on some kind of medication because some of us is not just enough people in our life who need medication, but some of us need med medicine to deal with some people who we encounter. Here is what I have discovered a few days ago is this, that we are living in a time of a new kind of crazy. We are experiencing a different kind of crazy that we have never seen before. A crazy in people that we've never seen before. A crazy in children that we have never seen before. A crazy on the workplace that we have never seen before. A crazy on TV that we have never seen before. A crazy in the government that we have never seen before. And yes, a crazy in the church that we have never seen before. Preach, Dr. Kidney, I think I will. Amen. Maybe just me, beloved, by, but one of my daily prayers to God is this. God, help me to keep my mind right. Yes, and the truth of the matter is that should be just my prayer. But it should be your prayer every day. Lord, keep my mind right. Keep me from saying what I really want to say. Things that I really don't need to say. Keep my mind right. Help me to walk away from my flesh really want to say and hang out. Lord, keep my mind right. Remind me that I can respond like I used to even though people be trying you and a part of me want to smack the stupid off of them. But no. I want you to know this, my brothers and sisters. I'm, I'm too old and too sexy to be taking a mug shot. Too popular to have my face on the front of the cover. I got your paper and too handsome to be in jail. Sometimes, my brothers and sisters, you better learn how to cry. Lord, keep my mind. Do I have a witness today? Somebody said that our mind is a terrible thing to waste. And the sad factor of this is this people are losing their mind every day. And I think sometimes we take having a right mind for granted because on this resurrection day, somebody ought to open up your mouth and just shout, thank you for the Lord keeping your mind. Yes, you ought to bless them from keeping your mind because after all the hell you suffer, after all you have been through, after all of the humiliations that you have been through, after all the circumstances, after all of the trials and tribulations, some of us should have been in a mental institution. Some of us should have been cuckoo for cocoa puffs. Some of us should have been in some kind of depression mode. But thank be unto God, you are in church, in clothes, in your right mind. Some of us should have been in a padded room, banging our heads against the wall. Some of us should have been depressed on meditation. Matter of fact, somebody woke up this morning and they couldn't even hear you hear them call their name. They couldn't even communicate with their family and don't even know that they 
your skill in the land of the living, but you want to thank God that God has woke you up this morning and clothed you in your right mind. Do I have any season sick in the church uh, that just glad uh, just to be in the number just one more time? Matter of fact, y'all used to say it like this. I'm glad you woke me up this morning. I, I'm glad that he started me on my way. I'm glad he put food on my table. I don't hear nobody. I'm glad he posed me in my right mind. I'm glad that he did a reasonable portion of health and strength. Is there anybody just glad to be in the service? Ah, my brothers and sisters, let me just say what my grandmama used to say. My grandmama said that he's a heart fixer and a mind regulator. My home church used to sing a song down in the country this morning when I rose. I didn't have no doubt. I knew that the Lord would take care of me. I know he will provide for me and I know that he will lead me along the way. I'm in my right mind and when you really think about it. Most of us uh, could have just snapped uh, away from being crazy. That's why if you don't have anything else on your mind, uh, you ought to thank God uh, that he clothes you in his right mind. Uh, you ought to thank God uh, that he had his hand upon you. Uh, you ought to thank God for keeping your mind just right. Uh, I just came to tell somebody uh, you could have lost it. Uh, you could have went postal. Uh, you could have went crazy. But thanks be unto God that God was able to help you to keep your mind. Lay hands on your mind as the Lord keep my mind. Doing Jesus, last day on earth, he had to deal with some crazy people. All of us know the details about what happened on this faithful Friday on a hill called Calvary. We know that we will never, no, never will be a death that is so gruesome as the crucifixion of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. He was an innocent man who died between the two thieves. A crazy people did as just as they said they were going to do. They mocked him. They scorned him. And they called him everything but a child of God. And sure enough that it was actually what happened. They hung him on a cross. They nailed him. They spat on him. And they called him out of his name. Same crowd that was screaming, Hosanna, Hosanna, just last Sunday was the same crowd on Friday who was shouting, crucify him, crucify him. How many of you all know that people would change up on you? How many of you live long enough to know that people would change up on you, preach Dr. Kennedy? And sometimes it's not the people, it's not the people who change, but it's the mass that begin to fall off of them. Ah, my Angelo once once said, someone shows you who they really are. Believe them the first time. Uh, one of many lessons that I've learned uh, from studying the life of Jesus uh, was that he learned how to love people uh, even when they are acting crazy. Priest, uh, even they change on them, he still loved them. Uh, you know the story, Judas changed him, but he still called him friend. Peter changed on him, but he still said to Peter, I love you. James and John slept on him, but he looked out for them. And my brothers and sisters, God will look beyond your fault and sees every one of your needs. That's why we quote often ask the church that God so loved the world that he came as holy Life, the crown changed on him, but he still went to the cross for you and for me. And I don't know about you, but I bless God today because Jesus never changed. He is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And I know you want to be honest. If it is 
the truth be told, you and I change all the time. Yes, we do. We change all the time. But if we learn anything about Jesus during the last days on earth, we learn that he remained consistent. Let the church say consistent. And on the cross, there were three lessons and three things that he taught. Three things. And I'm out your way. Number one, what Jesus taught us on the cross was that in spite of all of the craziness that has been taken in your life. Number one, my brothers and sisters, stick with the script. Let the church out stick with the script. Yes, yeah, stick with the script. The Bible says that the race is not given to the swift nor to the strong, but it's one to the end to endure to the end. But those who stick to the strip, Jesus stuck with the strip because he said, Father, not my will, but thy will be done. In other words, Daddy, this life is not about me, but it's all about the glory of God. Maybe that's why Paul was saying that the suffering of this present age is not worth to be compared to the glory which shall be revealed in us. Can I talk to somebody in the room today? This life is not your own. This life is not about you. You are the one that the, you are the one that's in the prop in God's show. Let me say that again. You are just one of the props in God's show. Preach, Dr. Kelly. You are just one of the props in God's show. I realized a few years ago that I'm just a prop. I'm just a standing. God has you and me on the stage called life for the purpose and you should know that sometimes God's purpose is not painless but you will experience some pain. God has a strange way of developing us and stretching us. Matter of fact somebody said if you want peace you better experience some pain. If you want more faith you better expect to go through some fire. If you want more joy Get ready to have some heartbreaks in your life. If you're going to have heartbroken by jealous people, if you want more anointing, you've got to get ready to know what it feels like to be a bandit. If you want more friends, you better expect to be forsaken. For you who want a testimony, you got to be ready to be tested. And if you want to go to heaven, you better know you got to first go through some hell to get to heaven. All I'm trying to tell somebody in church on the day, you got to go through some situation. But my brothers and sisters, God has a way of stretching you. But he does it because he just wants to know, can you be tested and can you be tried? Can you go through hell and still be able to stick with the script? And I don't know who I'm preaching to on this Easter service, but I hear God told me to tell you that it's time to stick to the script. No matter how hard it is, stick with the script. No matter how unfair it may be, stick with the script. No matter what way you got to go through, just stick with the script because the script belongs to you. And God told me to tell somebody that before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. I knew you can handle it. I knew you can manage it. I know you can get through it. I know that you can take it. I know that you can bear it. I know that you can live through it. I know that you can make it do what it do. I knew you. I knew you wouldn't quit. I knew you wouldn't give up. I knew you wouldn't cry forever. But after all of the suffering, all oh, after suffer a while, you know you got to declare, though they slay me, but yet I will trust them. Brothers and sisters, when you go through what you're going through, just know that God is walking with you. He's talking with you. He's telling you that you are his own. And don't think you're too slow yourself. That you too big for your own bridges. Just know that you ain't got what to drive up. Y'all, please sit down. 
turn. Oh, but I want you to understand, my Christian friend, that God is able to give you the strength to handle the script. Oh, my brothers and sisters, he gave it just for you. And I know sometimes it get hard. And I know sometimes it get rough. But God gave you the script because he know that you can handle it. He knew that you can work it. And I don't need to be in your business on today. But God told me to tell you, be not dismayed. Whatever be time you, God will take care of you. Is there anybody in here know that God has been taking care of you? I mean, you know that God has been in your care. I mean, you know that God has been right by your side. It's because you know the script and you stick with the script. And you got to understand that God will bless you. I got a script that ain't easy, but God giving me the strength to work it out. Matter of fact, just look at your name and encourage them and say, work the script. My second thing that you must do is that, number one, you must understand you got to stick with the script, but secondly, you got to alienate yourself from the audience. Uh, alienate yourself from the audience. Matter of fact, just encourage somebody and say, stop looking at the crowd. That was the wrong neighbor. Look at another neighbor and say, stop looking at the crowd. Don't look at the crowd, my brothers and sisters, because the crowd sometimes is predictable. Sometimes they feel in you, and sometimes they not. But even though sometimes everybody in the crowd is not appreciating uh, what you're doing on the stage, preach, dog. I'm, I'm coming to pick that back up. Uh, you got some haters in the crowd who is just wanting you to fail, uh, who is waiting for you to fall. Uh, there are some people in the audience, uh, or you have already counted you out, uh, who said you couldn't do it, uh, that you wouldn't make. But there are some people that you ought to thank Jesus for who are also in your corner and cheering you on and who got your back. There are some people, uh, my brothers and sisters, if you are like me, you got to thank God for who said, I got your back. I'm praying for you. I believe in you. I support you. You can do this. Don't you quit. Don't you give up. Don't you stop fighting. Don't you stop believing in God and trusting in God Almighty. Matter of fact, there's somebody who hears you or you know who may be going through what you've been through, but trust they going to be with you every step of the way. Yes, they're going through something, but I decree and declare and you ought to encourage somebody and say, you got this. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, you got this. Yes, you got this, my brothers and sisters. There's a strong possibility that somebody in here is just about ready to quit, but just in case if you're sitting in the area of someone who think they're not good enough or will say enough is enough, please do me a favor and look at somebody with your mask on and declare unto them, don't you quit. Matter of fact, you tell them you better not quit because we serve a God who will be able to help you along the way. You come too far to quit. You've been suffering for a long time to quit. You've been through too much to quit. But the reality is somebody with you are close to a breakthrough to quit. What is about to happen in your life can be compared to all you are going through right now. You need to stay on the stage. Who am I preaching to on this day? That you got to stay on the stage because what you don't know and what you need to know about some people in the audience is that the reason why some of them don't want you on the stage anyway. It's because they think it should have been there. Preach, Dr. 
kill it. Let me say it again and drop it like it's hot. And people, my brothers and sisters, don't want you on the stage anyway. It's because they think it should have been them. They want to take your place. And I used to call them backstabbers. They smile in your face all the time. They want to take your place. They mad at you because you're on the stage and you doing the talk on thing. You big, you Mr. Big Stuff or oh, Mrs. Big Stuff. It ain't good for them. But I want to tell somebody as long as you got King Jesus, you better do the talk on thing. Just encourage somebody to say, do the talk on thing. If you're trying to start your own business, do the talk on thing. If you're trying to better yourself, do the talk on thing. If you're trying to lose some weight, do the talk on thing. If you're trying to go back to school, go and do the talk on thing. If you're trying to make your life better for yourself, go ahead and do the talk on thing. I wish to look at somebody and say, do the talk on thing. You do it. And you do it big. But I like the way Beyonce said, she said, I'm about to slay this thing. Is there anybody in here just want God to slay that blessing, to slay that miracle, to turn those things around for your soul? Hallelujah. I want you to know, my brothers and sisters, God sees it. I want it. I dream it. I work for it. I grind until I own it. I will give it everything I've got. You got to say, I'm going to slay this thing. My brothers and sisters, you can't have a million dollar dream with a minimum wage ethic. Ah, uh, it will just not your skill while they're hating on you. Just keep on grinding and stay on the stage. Everybody don't deserve to be on the stage. But if God privileges you to be on the stage, you do the talk on thing and stop worrying about what people are saying and discouraging what you be not this man. What God has for you, it is for you. And matter of fact, you ought to send your haters a, a nice selfie and say, look what the Lord has done. Yeah. I know I'm going to get no amen, all right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm almost done. Amen. But not only you must stick with the script, Sister Ethel, not only you must alienate yourself from the crowd, right. but finally, Mother Williams, last thing must do that you got to learn how to take directions from the director. Yeah. Huh, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, take direction from the director. Matter of fact, since they don't want to talk to you, just listen to the director. Because what you need to know about the director is that the director already knows the entire script. Preach Dr. Kinley. And the only reason why you got the part, only because the director knew that you can work the script. Listen to me, St. Jane. Everybody can do what you do. And I know who this thing is for, who is going to be blessed on this day. But the reason why you got the script was because no one else could do it like you can. The director gave it to you because he knows uh, that you can handle it. So now all you got to do is work it. And all you got to do is make it happen. And what you also need to know is this. It's not always the people in the audience who is hating on your skills. But sometimes it's some of the Negroes on the same stage with you who is upset with you because they don't have your part. Preach Dr. Kinley. But the reason why they don't have your part is because they don't have the skills uh, nor the anointing uh, that God has for you. And so my brothers and my sisters, uh, I came to tell somebody uh, who's hating on you uh, just learn how to continue uh, to give God praise uh, in spite of uh, what you're going through. Uh, and I came to somebody right now. You may say it's hard, Pastor, to play this play called life. And it's all right that you live it through a chapter that you never imagined that you will be able to go through. That 
That's why you're in church on Easter Sunday. It's because I came to help you that you can do it. How can you hang in there when you seem like nothing left else to do? But my brothers and sisters, I came to tell somebody that God has it under control. You keep on pushing and you keep on pressing because
face to father. Yes. Our tears go. Life. But a living just because he lives. to you. I pray that you enjoy your families on this day. And just understand the importance of the resurrection of Jesus. Because he got up, you can get up and conquer what you need to conquer. Amen. If all hearts and minds are clear, let's all stand. Let the church say let the church
greatest comeback of all time. May God bless you and God keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his comments and give you his peace and his shalom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let the church say Let the church say